Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you so much for watching. In my last video, I got a lot of questions about some of the accessories that I use for my CNC, so I thought I would do a dedicated video to talk about what I consider the essential accessories for a hobbyist level CNC. And at the end, I'll probably throw in a couple, maybe optional accessories or things for the Onefinity CNC specifically. All right, let's go ahead and jump straight into the video. The first accessory I would like to talk about is completely essential to hobbyist grade CNC work as far as I am concerned, and that is this eighth inch collet right here for your router. Now the Makita router back here does come with a quarter inch collet, but this eighth inch collet from Elair is essential, I think, to entry level CNC so that you can use some of the smaller diameter bits that are less expensive so you're not going all in with some of the big quarter inch bits that have that quarter inch shank that can be used with the Makita router out of the box. So for about $25, you can get this Elair collet. It is an excellent collet, has a very low run out, and so I do highly recommend this. If you don't have one, run out and get one. I will leave a link down below. The second accessory that I think is essential to CNC work is something to hold your bits and other components of your CNC. So this is a bit holder that I created many years ago for my original Shape Oko, and it has proven the test of time. I still use it today. So what you have here is a place in back for some of the quarter inch bits, which is where I store my V cutters, some more quarter inch storage up front where I store my go-to quarter inch bits. And then on the front, I have some eighth inch call it bits that I have organized by size. So I have the smallest bits up front, then I go to the 16th and then eighth inch bit. And this allows me to keep the bits readily accessible and organized for any operations that I'm doing. Off to the side here, I do have a little well that I store various things in. And then I have on the side here, the Allen keys or Allen wrenches for tightening and loosening various things on the machine. On the back, I do have a place where I could store the wrench. This was originally designed for the DeWalt router, which only had one wrench. So with the Makita, you do have two. So I have designed a separate holder for my wrenches for the Makita here. It is meant to attach to the workbench here like this, and then uh, you can store them. It's got a little tilt so you're easily accessible. I did take this one off because I redid my waste board recently, so I do need to reattach it. So again, the second essential accessory, I believe, is something to hold your bits. Lots of different options out there, so I do encourage you to run off and go ahead and make something for yourself. The third accessory that you are going to need for your CNC is something to hold down your workpiece. So I have a variety of different clamps here in front of you, and I'm going to walk you through the pros and cons of each. So right off the bat, I do have the original clamp that I got with my X-Carve. It is a little plastic arm that you screw down into the wasteboard system. These are very good. They're very resilient, and if you do run into them, they're made out of plastic, so it will not destroy your bit. I do like them a lot. Uh, the only downside is they're a little bit pliable so they do bend a little bit if you torque down on them too much but I do still use these on occasion uh, especially whenever I'm trying to hold down something that I need a low profile for which leads me to the next sort of clamping system this is a clamp that I uh, designed myself uh, you can actually buy these on Etsy as well from some other folks but the whole idea is it provides downward force onto your workpiece as you screw into the base unit here and then you can use this little track here to screw into your T-Track system. They work fairly well. I gotta say, if they were made out of aluminum, they would be a lot better. They don't really grip too well because they're 3D printed. I printed this in PETG, which is a little slippery. So whenever I do this again, I'll probably print it in PLA, which might have a little bit more grip strength or be so audacious to mill something out of aluminum, which is something that's on my to-do list. The next type of clamps you can get are these OOP clamps from Onefinity. They are low profile, like the ones you can get for the X-Carve, and they are called OOPS clamps because you can actually run into them. They are plastic on the tips here, and if you do run into them, they also do not destroy your bit. This is good, so I, you can see that I've actually run into this one probably more than once, I would imagine. But they do have a couple different options to hold down. In this case, I do have these quarter 20 bolts that slide right into the T-Track, and then you can clamp them down. They're not as low profile as as these, uh, but they are still pretty low profile and I do use them a lot to hold down a lot of my work material. The next area in clamping are these big Rockler uh, clamps made out of aluminum. I have a couple different sizes of these and a couple different varieties. These big ones here are really great if you're holding down something super tall or something that needs a lot of torquing force. 
I don't necessarily like them very much because they have this extremely long bolt and I have run into this bolt more times than I care to admit with the machine, either the dust boot or the actual base of the Z gantry itself. So if I were to maybe change this out, I think I'd get a slightly lower profile bolt here to keep that chance of hitting the, the axis down just a little bit. The other type of Rockler clamps that I have are the side clamps. They're not really clamps per se, but what you can do is slide them into your T-track and push your material up against it and then tighten these down so it gives you a nice flat clamping surface. I do have some of the cam clamps from Rockler as well that allows you to do, it's the same operation where you push your machine up to it, but then it has a little lever that you can squeeze your material between the two of them. Uh, the bolts that came with them are not quite long enough for my wasteboard system here, so I've ordered some new bolts for them. The last clamping technique that I'd like to cover is what I call the classical blue tape method, which I've been using a lot recently. So what this means is you take a piece of blue tape, you lay it on your wasteboard, you put a corresponding piece of blue tape on your workpiece, a little bit of super glue in the middle, you'll hold your workpiece down and it'll glue your workpiece to the tape itself which holds it very securely while you're doing cut operations, but then you just peel the entire thing off your wasteboard when you're done and it removes very easily and then you can just peel the tape off your work surface. So this works very well. It's especially useful if you need something where you need access to the complete top of your workpiece. You can't have these other clamps holding it down. So like I said, I've been using this a lot recently, especially when I've been doing a lot of surfacing on my boards. If I'm doing some V cutting or something like this, you want to make sure your top is very flat. I use the medium thick star bond to hold it down. You can use some of the more, the higher viscosity ones or the lower viscosity ones if you want. I found this is a nice medium thick version uh, of the super glow and a little activator on the other side of the tape works wonders. All right, so that's your third option for accessories for your CNC. The fourth option for your CNC is not quite as essential as some of the other ones, but it is incredibly helpful and it does help you expedite your workflow. And that is this little setup block that allows you to zero your machine in the X, Y, and Z axes. Now, previously I had one that can only do the Z axis, which was perfectly fine. I could just eyeball X and Y, but this one really does expedite your workflow. You just stick it on the corner of your workpiece and then you allow it to zero out on each side. If you want to use Z only, that's very straightforward. You just flip it over and you probe your Z. So it's really handy and it really does help speed up things. But more importantly, it reduces the error during the zeroing process, especially if you forget to zero for some reason or another. Uh, having something like this allows you to do it very quickly once you have everything set up. The only thing that I would say that I don't like about this is really the cost. For something as simple as a square block of aluminum, it is quite expensive from Onefinity or uh, from Charlie who makes these themselves. So, But if you do want to get into this, I recommend you to go out on the Onefinity website and pick yourself up one. Very useful. The last essential component that I think every CNC needs is a dust boot or some way to remove the chips from your workpiece. I know a lot of people don't necessarily use dust boots. A lot of times if they are making videos, they want to leave the dust boot off so that users can see what's going on. But I do think having a dust boot is absolutely essential to not only reduce the recutting of the chips that are in the slot, but also just clear that area to make a more clean cut for future passes. So this is the dust boot that I got directly with the Onefinity. I have had a very similar one of these from my previous X-Carve and Shake Oko. They work the same. They have the little arms on the side and it slides in. They have magnets, it holds it in. It's very secure. There's a newer version for the Onefinity specifically where the uh, hose nozzle is actually on the back, which I think I might be investing in because sometimes having it on the front does hit some things on, on the front of the machine. So having it evacuate out the back might be a little bit better but uh, this is relatively inexpensive all things being said so I would definitely recommend you get that as part of your upgrade for your Onefinity and I definitely think this is perhaps one of the most essential components that you need for your CNC especially as you first start getting into the hobby all right, well, that was the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I ran through what I think are the five most essential accessories for your hobbyist level CNC, starting with the eighth inch collet, which I do think is essential. Moving over into the work holding, talking about the two different ways that I did it. Then we jumped into the clamping systems, 
talked about the setup block and then also the dust collection unit or the dust shoe for your machine. So I really do think these are the minimum entry accessories that you would want to get if you're just getting into the hobby. In my previous video, I did do a breakdown of the total cost of getting into the CNC hobby, which has all of these linked and their associated prices. So if you're interested in that, I will leave a link above and a link below. All right, thank you so much for watching the video. Thank you so much for getting this far and don't forget, to be inspired.